Welcome to Grampy Pop Pop Storytime Cabin. Today's story is called Clarence the Copycat. Story by Patricia Lackin. Pictures by John Manders. Hey kids, welcome back to an awesome Wednesday. Today's story is Clarence the Copycat. Story by Patricia Latkin and the pictures are going to be by John Manders. Clarence the Copycat. Clarence's mother and father were the best mousers Sam's Sandwich Shop had ever had. They spent all their time catching mice. Clarence did not. He was a peaceful cat. He couldn't bear to harm another living creature, even one that ate the deli meats and scared the customers. His family tried to change him, but they couldn't. So Sam sent him away. Alone in the world, Clarence stuck to his principles. He would not hurt mice. But everywhere he went, people wanted him to do just that. Scrum, you know, Mousa, yelled Gladys of Forever Flowers. Scat cat, shouted Annie of the Quality Diner. Ouch, you lazy bum, bellowed Tom of ye old general store. Will I ever find a real home? Clarence wondered sadly. He searched up one street and down another. He sniffed around parking lots and padded along pathways, but he had no luck. Exhausted, he collapsed in a small spot of shade. A man stood in a nearby doorway. And whose cat are you? He asked. My own, Clarence meowed softly. A stray by the looks of you, the man said. He brushed cracker crumbs from his bushy mustache. Hmm, do I need a cat? He wondered. Clarence followed the man into a strange place. Hundreds of books lined the walls of a big room. There were tables and chairs in the middle of the floor, and fluffy cushions lay in a sun-filled window seat. A big machine where it lit up and spat out paper. Welcome to Bondstable Library, said the man. I'm Mr. Spana. He unwrapped a wedge of cheese and gave it to Clarence. Clarence purred a deep, satisfied purr. This place had warm spots for snoozing and many mountains to climb. But best of all, there were no signs of mice. There were just friendly people who sat and read books or carried them in and out of the library. Clarence watched them come and go each day as he sat near the door on top of the copy machine. Soon, Mr. Spanner started calling Clarence Copycat. The two of them grew to depend upon each other. Clarence helped Mr. Spanner find misplaced books and pencils. He kept Mr. Spanner company when he had to work late, and Clarence was the most attentive listener during story time. In return, Mr. Spanner kept Clarence well-read, well-fed, and well-petted. Life was good. Life was real good. Until the first bitter cold day of winter, Clarence smelled him. Then he saw him. A mouse darted from under the copy machine. Mr. Spanner saw him too. Get that mouse, Mr. Spanner called to Clarence. Clarence's heart sank. He didn't know what to do. Come on, copycat, cried Mr. Spanner. Clarence didn't move. He saw Mr. Spanner whirling and twirling, creeping and crawling all over the library, trying to catch that mouse. He's gone! Mr. Spanner finally panted. Thank goodness, thought Clarence. That night, Clarence's past lives flashed before his eyes. Ouch, you lazy bum! Scrum, you little mouse -er! And scat cat echoed in his ears. This time I can't let myself get kicked out he decided. He paced the library floor, trying to think of a plan. As he rounded the corner of Mr. Spanner's desk, he noticed that the cheese container wasn't covered. Of course! Clarence meowed triumphantly. That mouse had been after the cheese, so Clarence bounded onto the desk and ate every last cube and crumb. But the next afternoon, the mouse showed up for story time. The children squealed. Get that mouse, Mr. Spanner cried, but Clarence didn't move from his cushion. He watched Mr. Spanner and the children whirling and twirling, creeping and crawling around the library, trying to catch that mouse. He's gone, Mr. Spanner finally gasped. Then he wagged his finger at Clarence. 
Mice like to eat books, you know. That night, Clarence couldn't sleep. He had to save the library books and his home. He paced the floor, trying to think of another plan. He was near the copy machine when he saw a tiny hole. That's it, thought Clarence. I'll block up every cranny and crack. No mouse will ever be able to crawl in here again. Early the next morning, Mr. Spanner opened the library. How did these books get everywhere except where they belong, he muttered. He looked at Clarence, who was perched high above in the mystery section. Clarence couldn't explain. He couldn't stop Mr. Spanner from removing all his book blockades. Later that day, Mr. Spanner had just lifted the lid of the copy machine when he began to shout, He's back, copycat! Get him! The mouse darted behind the library cart. Clarence didn't move. Books flew as Mr. Spanner grabbed the broom. Mr. Spanner twirled, papers swirled. Mr. Spanner crept and began to lower the broom. Stop! Clarence yowled, and without a plan, he jumped. He soared through the air. Mr. Spanner whirled across the room. Whamp! They collided. Bunk! Clarence landed with a big, fat belly flop, right on the copy machine glass. He tried to get up, but suddenly lights began flashing. Clarence was blinded by them. They went back and forth, back and forth, beneath him. Papers flew out of the machine. One sheet, two, three, four, five. Gone! yelled Mr. Spanner. He picked up Clarence. I'm going! Clarence wailed. Mr. Spanner put him on the floor. He gave Clarence's head a pat. Clarence looked up. Mr. Spanner wasn't mad. Clarence wasn't being kicked out. But what happened to the mouse? Clarence peeked under the copy machine. He jumped when he saw it staring back at him. It wasn't a mouse. It was a huge black cat with bulging legs and an enormous tummy and whiskers that stuck out like arrows. It was Clarence. Well, not really Clarence. It was a large copy of Clarence. And it was the scariest cat Clarence had ever seen. It must have been the scariest cat the mouse had ever seen too, because that mouse didn't come back, ever. Many Saturdays later, after another wonderful story time, Clarence and Mr. Spanner sat nestled together in a window seat. They soaked up the last rays of sunlight as they ate their cheese and crackers. I knew I needed a cat like you, said Mr. Spanner, and Clarence the copycat knew it too. The end. <laughs> That's one crazy cat. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that story as much as I loved reading it to you. Be sure to join us next time at Grampy Pop Pop's Storytime Cabin. Have an awesome week full of happiness and success. And remember, only you can be. Bye-bye.